Yep. Sorry, it's, it's, the, it's the blue face. I'm, I'm adjusting. I'm adjusting to the oh. blue. Are you guys how, filming? Yeah. What's she, happening? She blew herself. I don't get it. This is what this is. This is going to happen to us soon, probably. Yeah. Sit there with your little conversation. She's going to turn around and spray us with the blue face gun. Yep. Plop! <laughs> Plop! Right in the face. Welcome back, everybody, to the Electric Pills Nerds. Scott. Ryan. Yes, we are, <laughs> we're back this week. We switched it around again, so we got the pedal first, and we'll be pairing the beer later. So what Back I, to the old yeah, format. Yeah, yeah, back to the old, back Original to the Original format. What we have this week is the... The Electro Quaker Boss. <laughs> See, I'm learning. He's learning things. <laughs> Today what we have is the Earthquaker Devices Dispatch Master. So I own this pedal, and I've owned it for a while, and it is probably, to me, one of the best combination delay reverbs you can get on the market. I, I use a phrase a lot that's called throw and go. There's a lot of, like, there's a lot of pedals that are, so a throw and go pedal to me is I was just like, about to ask. I saw the look in your eyes. I still want to backtrack to delay, but throw, throw and go. Yeah, so throw and go pedals, just uh, as a, a general term, is just something that, like, you can, like, set. <laughs> nice. Whoops. But you can set and forget. Like you have your settings, and it's always going to be there. And that's the, that's just you don't need to think about it too much. It's a throw and go. You put it on your pedal board, pretty much almost anywhere you put it, it's going to sound good. So nice. it, you don't have to think too much of well, let me dial my tone. Yeah, you know? gotta get it just yeah. <laughs> oh man. So and you were going to ask what a delay pedal is. So yeah, just for the beer people that yeah. don't play guitar. For people that don't <laughs> do sorry, cocaine, too much. yeah, do. <laughs> ah, sorry, COVID. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so delay, delay for non music people. I did not do enough research to look up the like history of delays, but sure. but I think I think it from what I remember, I think it, it comes from tape. Oh, de delays happened. So like you know we talked about flanging and like when when you when you push on the tape head, it kind of delays the signal a little bit mm. and kind of creates that little weird flangey sound and that was you that that's was a that was a tape delay that's that more or a, less that, that, uh, more or less it's, it's uh, what you're doing is you are delaying the signal but in like fractions of seconds i mean it's mm -hmm. so that's why it kind of creates this disjunct sound but that what you're really doing is delaying the signal okay flies flies everywhere fucking get out of here you goddamn Jack. jackass son of a bitch Get out of here, you fucking flies. There's a fly over the headlight, Tony. We got flies coming for us. Fuck. Fuck out of here, you flies. <laughs> so what you're doing with the tape delay, you're setting two different tape heads where one is like pretty separate than the other, but you can kind of move it with this little uh, device where it kind of moves the tape head for you. But you're running a signal past one tape head, then it hits the second one, and that's your delay. So, and that, so it just keeps going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay. That's where it kind of gives your... If you ever listen to, like, U2... Does it, like, repeat? Yeah. Essentially, like, the first note, and it's shortly after that first note repeats that same note. Yeah, it's like, boom, 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 boom. And, and there, 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 there's a decay to it, because there's, like, only so much that a tape can handle. Oh, like, yeah. That, yeah. That, that, okay. Yeah, a good way to think of like that. Like U2 does that a lot. Yeah, right. like the edge. I mean, like um, there's a lot of delay there. If you ever hear the song Sweet Disposition. Sweet Disposition. That's I a, literally, yeah. I will actually set this pedal <laughs> for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Sweet Disposition right here. Sweet, sweet dis Disposition is a great example of like a really heavily mixed delay. Mm -hmm. it, and that, what they're using is probably a digital delay. So I'll, I'll dive in a little bit deeper on this one. So there's two different really types of delay that you can get nowadays. Yeah, really, really only two types. There's analog and there is digital. And, and to get, without getting the specifics for the beer nerds and the pedal nerds that really don't want to hear this, analog delays use a certain circuitry to where the repeats mimic a tape machine. So what that means is that your repeats are saturated, they're warmer, and they're less defined. Mm. So they sound more mumbled. Best way I can describe it. They'll be like, bum, mm, 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 mm. With a digital delay, it just replicates your sound more clear. It's just like, it's just... More of a clear articulation. Mir yeah, I mean, it just it mirrors exactly what you just played without it getting muffled. It's just all you have is a decrease in volume. I see. 
Yes. Yeah, that's a good way to yeah. describe it. Why does it have a phone on it? I actually don't know. I figure the reason why this has a phone on it is it's like playing telephone, you know? It goes down the line and it kind of gets more. There is a delay. There is a delay. And so like if you I know. said like when you're on a conference call, it's like, Gary, are you there? And Gary's just like looking at the screen just like, I'm here, yes, Tom. Tom. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm here. <laughs> so that's, a, that's, I guess that's, that's why they did that. Passing the signal around. So... So, as I said, this is a combination delay reverb. So we have four different knobs. We have mix, reverb, time, and repeats. I'm gonna kind of demo this pedal, obviously. This is what we do. So a dry signal. So regular Quilter Mini 101. Goes back cabinet, 112. So this, everything is set at midnight, right in the middle. So you get the best regular tone. Ah, sweet. It's a, it's a very sweet sound. Oh, it's a very sweet pedal. So that's with the reverb and delay on. A few but things I, you can do. But I want more. Oh, yeah, of course you want more. And this is, we're going to get into some cool shit about this pedal. Cool. So I'm going to take the reverb completely off. So now this is just strictly delay. That's a good, that's a quite a lot of delay. It is. This, this delay pedal can do a myriad of things. So this pedal can go from zero milliseconds to 1.5 seconds of delay. So if I turned the time all the way up, that's a, that's a second and a half of delay. <laughs> that's a really good heartbeat, <laughs> a really yeah. bad heartbeat. Like probably if you're like snoozing. Yeah, and then the reverb. There doesn't say really how, how. It didn't say on their website like how long or how short the reverb is. It just says counterclockwise less reverb, clockwise more reverb. So nothing's going on. So the the, the delay is completely off on, mm -hmm. inside the pedal. So if you just want reverb, you can do that. Purpose pedal very much purpose. like again there's not much to it but there's a lot to it and here's the coolest part about this whole pedal is I'm gonna turn it you can make it simple or you can make it you can customize it to make it just awesome absolutely and, and here's the to me this is the coolest part of the pedal so most delays you buy on the market will just feed back meaning it just repeats and not only that the repeats grow in volume and it just ends up distorting and like just being way too loud. This is the only reverb that I know of on the market that doesn't feed back and distort. So meaning, literally I can just have this super open chord. And everything's turned all the way up. Isn't that gorgeous? got such beautifully like such a beautiful like clear articulate voice when you want it to but mm -hmm. also it sounds like a nice like a chorus such a beautiful mm -hmm. chorus to it and what's going on I'll turn the reverb down like you're in the clouds so now you're just hearing the reverb or here yeah you're just hearing the delay right nice yeah I was listening to this pedal um, on on YouTube. <laughs> Man, you can get really weird with that. You can get super weird, but again, if you're like me and don't want to mess with the pedal all the time and just set and forget, I this is pretty much my only setting that I use at Mont Pedal. <laughs> Yeah. 
was, when I was listening to the guy play it, um, the video you sent me on YouTube. Probably is Andy from Pro Guitar Shop. Pro Guitar Shop. Now with I mean, Reverb. Just like one word that came to mind. Tone notes? Should we get to tone notes? Yeah, are we, are tone we, notes. Have yeah. we been doing that basically this whole time? Yeah, pretty much. So like um, uh, with this, it's very um, big and fluffy. Yeah, like you're in the clouds yeah. in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, I, I equate it to, you know, like great vocalists. Like if this was a singer, it'd be a badass singer. It's very like, and also I think they would play this pedal too, these two musicians that for the musicians that came to mind was well, obviously you too because of the. Oh part. yeah. I, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do that in a second. But um, John Mayer, mm -hmm. um, and, and what, like I could see him using this. I could see uh, Jeff Buckley. Oh, using totally. This. Like imagine totally. playing. Totally. Uh, imagine playing Hallelujah with this pedal. You could like play the play the t the, the notes to Hallelujah, but also like play have another guitar playing like. Jeff Buckley's part, like vocal parts, and it would mm -hmm. be like it'll just it, be surreal. It would literally just be like his voice sitting on a <clears throat> bed of feathers, just a big billowy cloud. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Crystal clear, big and fluffy. We can definitely put Jeff Buckley E. Yeah, Jeff, e, Jeff Buckley E. U two E. <laughs> yeah, so um, just a, it got, has great articulation. Yes. Without having like too harsh of an attack. <laughs> So yeah, this is the setting you need to get any edge or sweet disposition kind of. So Ryan, I think I've gone all through the pedal. Yeah, it's super other... versatile. Yeah, you, you know you can use it for your reverb, delay, or both. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Exactly. I, I, now I see why you own one. Oh yeah, because I'm a because I'm a lazy fuck, and <laughs> I don't want to mess with this yeah. too much. So uh, with this wonderful fluffiness that is a, that is the pedal and clear and crystal, what did you bring? I think um, the ideal beer to match with. A lot of the tone notes that we just heard, beautiful, crystal clear some, uh, a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. uh, just crystalline, um, just has a beautiful voice. It's sizzling. Not being too weird, just a beautiful beer style. And today I brought for you, you probably had one of these, but I don't, you might, maybe you have had this one. I know y'all, most of y'all like this. I brought it, I brought it. Where is it? Let's try, let me try this. Let me see if I can get it out of the fridge. Ah! Yes. Not Reisdorf Kolsch, as the Germans would say, Z Reisdorf Kersch, or uh, Reisdorf Kolsch. Kersch. Yeah. <laughs> we, we got a buddy, Sam, who, who knew, knows German, and he's like, it's not Kolsch. It's got those two little dots on the, the O. It's Kersch. <laughs> Kersch. It, and it's not, I mean, it's from Cologne, Germany, mm -hmm. but it's... Cologne. Uh, but they call it Kölne. It's Kölne. like literally K-O-L-N. Kölne. I don't know how, like, you know, Germans went from that... And how like English um, translated it as cologne. Mm -hmm. Squirt, squirt, squirt. Don't really, don't really know how that happened. But yeah, Köln, a true Kölsch from the land of Köln or Cologne, Germany. Köln. One of the OG Kölsch beers, Kölsch beers from the source of true Kölsches. Yeah, before I talk about it too much, like I do, let's give it that good old hardcore pour. <laughs> that hardcore Kölsch pour. Hard Kölsch pour. <laughs> This best master today with the Reisdorf Kolsch or Reisdorf Kelsch. Kelsch. Kelsch from Cologne or Köln, Germany. Mm -hmm. 
why did I pick this be uh, beer for this? Yeah, pedal? I'm I'm curious now because um, I mean it's once again I think it's just it's like this pedal has just a beautifully clear voice and it has some it's like beautiful characteristics without being too much crazy or over the top. That's the same thing with the Kolsch. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple beer ingredients wise, but all of it kind of just kind of adds up into something that's first and foremost extremely drinkable. Oh yeah, but also has some good nuances of flavor tucked in there. Yeah, it um, is. Like, I, we just did the hardcore pour, and I just poured the rest of this beer, almost. Yeah. I'm, I am seriously almost done with this beer. It's so good. And just, yeah, you just, Kolsch is... This is the thing with Kolsch's, man. Pop them down. <clears throat> a lot of their German beers, you just, a lot of them are just pounders. You just mm -hmm. crush them. And I will crush you! Yeah. Or, or I think they say in, in, in Germany, they say Krush. We, 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 we want to crush the beer. Crush them. <laughs> I, w I must break you. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this. Basically... Seemingly like cleanish pedal, but it's yeah. got some like just has such a but like the pedal. The beer also has a beautiful voice. Uh, it, it does. That's just, to me, that's that's Kolsch characteristic. I mean, Kolsch. okay, so I mean, I'm I'm gonna jump into flavor notes already. Let's, let's go. Let's jump into it before we start talking more about Kolsch. Exactly, because yeah. this is what I love about this, and plant. This is my favorite Kolsch. Yeah, I think uh, y'all y'all make one at Live Oak that is like damn near. Yeah, we try to be ours is pretty two style. Yeah, it really is. Yours, I think it is super flavorful but it's not it's almost this it's it, you're very mm -hmm. too style but it's, it's your own thing mm -hmm. though i can definitely tell it's a live oak beer <clears throat> this is just of course from the motherland yeah this is from Kolschland, uh, yeah aka cologne germany but what i was gonna say is like what i love about this it's just and i don't want y'all to take this the wrong way pedal and beer nerds but it's super sweet but not like sugary bakey like bakery like chocolate but it's like it's just malty sweet it's sweet man it's fucking sweet yeah uh <laughs> It's definitely a beer's beer in that you're not drowned out by like hoppiness. There is, actually is some bready maltiness to it. Mm -hmm. It actually is like a, liquid, a good version of liquid bread, which is what beer's supposed to be. Um, if you're kind of drowning out a beer with hops too much, it's, it's just kind of like, yeah. unless we're talking about IPAs, which are intentionally overly hopped, mm -hmm. um, you're just kind of like missing the mark. It's like, you gotta add some of that bready, yeah. grainy malt in there. Yeah, Kolsch like Kolsch captures that, but also gives it a little bit of just a kiss of hops. Mm -hmm. Where it also just still makes it a beer's beer. Yeah, it's like it's, it's like not I'm, just one dimensional. It's, it's like I'm drinking like a sweet loaf of bread, but like a naturally sweet yeah, loaf of bread, not like super, not like pan dulce or something. It's it's not like intentionally sugary, but it's like just naturally sweet from mm -hmm. the yeast and the 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 grain that you're using. Well, mainly it's just yeah the, the grain, the grain. But you know, it's not the most attenuative yeast. Um, it's fairly attenuative, so it does leave some residual sugars behind. Mm -hmm. Um, attenuation for pedal nerds, not beer nerds. Because um, attenuation for us means something way different than for you. Yeah. So what is your what attenuation? Is, your attenuation? Is, is how how much a, a yeast ferments the beer, mm. well, and it's on a percentage scale. There's a range. You know, on average, I guess beer yeast ferments 75 percent. Um, and this is yeah in the in like the mid 70s percent. So this is like pretty standard attenuation. Some English strains have lower attenuation, so they you know, the high, in the 60 percent ish to low 70s. Mm -hmm. um, some cool. uh, um, so it leaves behind some sweetness. Like then there's some Belgian strains and like Saison strains that are really highly attenuative, 80s, 90 percent. So it makes a very dry beer. Lager yeast can also kind of get up in the 80s around there. You're left with a much less sweetness. Uh, this is just kind of like great middle ground. Look at that. Hey, hey, hey. Look at that. Look, look at that. Hallelujah. If I could, if I if that was a life size beer of Kolsch, I could drink that whole. Th I want to drink that whole thing like right now. Oh yeah, I want to put that down my gullet. That's a gullet. That's in the words of the beerists. That's a that looks pretty throatable to me. That's a throatable beer. Yeah, I could. Uh, that's that's the thing with Kolsch. You can just drink so much of it. Attenuation for pedal nerds. Funny enough that you say attenuation. Uh -huh. Ours a lot of times is when you put attenuator on an amp, is to essentially, like you can crank your amp. And if it's a super loud, like 100 watt amp, an attenuator, you can dial back the volume, the overall electrical signal from your amp going to the speaker. So you probably kind of put it in between the head and the cabinet. So where you can get the head's full potential at a quieter volume without messing up the head. So that's an attenuator for us. That's attenuation. So volume attenuation is really what we relate to. Cool. 
So, fun fact, the more you know, attenuation, attenuation. Multiple definitions for that word. <clears throat> this way, these go together. Tasty notes. <laughs> so, I said sweet. Swedish. I'd say Sweet. Swedish. No, this is German, not Swedish. <laughs> Fuck you. I know. <laughs> Uh, what I love about Kolsch is, yeah, along those lines of sweet, they have, some of them can have like a honey, like a wildflower honey-esque okay. note to, in addition to that sweetness and that graininess. Um, okay. I mean, some, I can probably get honey from this. So some some people, yeah. Some different different palates. I usually on Kolsch's, like proper Kolsch's, I get, I that's get probably, a little bit of honey. That's probably what I'm talking about sweet-wise. It's like kind of like this underlying thing. It's not like... It's not prominent, super in your face. It's just like it's sweeter than most German beers that I would have. Yeah, like, personally, that's just my thing. Um, I've tasted much uh, hoppier cultures than, than this. Mm -hmm. um, this is mildly hoppy. I think this is a really good introduction beer, like for for anyone. So, so mildly hoppy is good to put up there. Yeah, mildly hoppy. Okay, for sure. Mostly dry, um, still semi sweet. Okay, <clears throat> cool. Um, crisp. Dry. Oh yeah, definitely crisp. I mean, just to quite. Equate this to you know the slight ale version of a pilsner. Got it. Without being as hoppy as a typical German pils, mm -hmm. which is so smooth, and it has a, just the most mild fruit mm -hmm. note of yeah. a little bit apple, a little pear. Um, sometimes pear. Um, sometimes, sometimes yeah. cultures can present themselves as <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna put burp up there, by the way. <laughs> some some cultures have a whiny characteristic. I'm gonna dig for that in this one. Not really getting like white wine. In this one, yeah, I'm not really getting that peanut Greek Griego I'm here. Peanut Noir, <clears throat> no, no ear. But yeah, they typically can have a little bit of freediness, and that's okay. I think okay. that's what makes makes Kolsch's like pretty great and not so boring. Not just like, oh, I'm just drinking like a you know really neutral blonde ale, you know, American blonde ale. I'm gonna it's give like us some very... background music, just a yeah. background note while we're all talking about this beautiful beer to kind of make sure it all ties in together. You know, yeah. Let's see, what's a good, what's a good? Spread it on. Spread it on. E6. I think an E6 chord's good. Alright. I want you. I want you. So, yeah. <laughs> Sick. Yeah, I think this is... I love this pedal for this reason. We can just sit and talk for minutes. Uh, so, yeah. That pretty much sums up tasting notes. And just to del you know, delve into more history of Kolsch and just story about this one in particular. This is from the land of Kolsch's Cologne, Germany, first brewed in 1894. Turns out, uh, as are most, that's when kind of the style of Kolsch or Kalsch came of, came to be okay. in the late 19th century. Um, in the town of Cologne, they were basically there was there was that kind of there was that new wave at the time of 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 lager beer, pilsner mm -hmm. beer. and in more parts of Germany um, and started to take over the ales of Germany, historical ales of Germany and to combat this, uh, you know, this kind of stampede of Pilsners during the late 19th century. The, uh, the brewers in Cologne, they devised a plan to uh, make a beer that was Pilsner-esque, looks like a Pilsner, but uses their traditional top fermenting ale yeast hmm. that over the years they have put pressure on to ferment this ale yeast a little cooler. Oh, nice. Typical ale fermentation temperature 70 degrees, 68 more, more specifically, but, oh. uh, but Kolsch yeast, in true Kolsch yeast, if you want to make Kolsch, use Kolsch yeast, is kind of like what is known as a hybrid strain. It's an ale strain that can ferment a little cold, cooler. Oh, so, yeah, 68 for regular ale. This can ferment 58, 55. I usually, you know, when you get to 50, that's basically lager temp. Uh -huh. And you probably have a pretty slow fermentation. Yeah, you probably won't get much of the fruitiness or the slight fruitiness that you'd get. So, yeah, they basically brew them to emulate Pilsners in, in a way. In a way. In a way. So, but unlike Pilsners, lagers, uh -huh. it's an ale, so they can still get them out to market faster. They ferment a little faster, and they can cold condition them a little faster, and they're just uh -huh. they're ready to go before, typically before most lagers. I'm glad they are because people in, in Cologne just drink this stuff like water, like, you know, if they drink like, you know, Pilsner and Hefe and mm -hmm. Munich Helles, like water, definitely Munich Helles, but in Cologne, this is like their beer. This is most, mostly all they drink. Wow. And they just drink them by the Stange, the Stange glass, which is luckily what we got here. Yeah, when, you, when you're at these Kolsch bars, these breweries pretty much, um, and there's like 20 or 30-ish, 30-ish uh, Kolsch breweries Gosh. in Cologne, and they typically serve them in, the, in this, just you order, you just keep on ordering one after the other. It's just like, these go so fast, they're just like ready to go, yeah. with the next one. So it's a great like session beer. Yeah, really. That, that term. Perfect session beer, big enough. This is almost sounding a little Twin Peaks. <clears throat> sure. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely. I want to hear I, this. I want to hear this, this pedal like on top of a, a mountain. Yeah, man. Like, let's see what else we got in the bag of tricks. I like that it like slightly detunes too. Mm. 
it's like it's got this I think that's why they call it the Dispatch Master too. I know we're going jumping from beer to pedal, beer to pedal, but it's like perfect imperfections. It is. It's, it literally, yeah, it's so clean, but also it's so clean, but also a little disjunct. Yeah, but just only slightly. It's like, but like, but la- like last week's pedal, ethereal. Very yeah. ethereal. Mm-hmm. Very ethereal. It's just like this beer is ethereal. It's just such a beautiful, easy to drink, but still yet so flavorful beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Semantic wise, historic, history, histor- his story, her story. Sorry. All, our story. Our story. Our story, y'all. Sorry. No, no, it's, I think it's his Tory. <laughs> <laughs> it's got one of those kind of late lo- logos on it, on a proper cultures from Cologne. Uh, basically, like, it's a controlled historical thing. It's like, it, like, they put the same similar thing on, like, wine bottles uh, from certain regions. I forgot what the term is. We'll put it up on the screen. But it's kind of a protected designation mm. to basically be like, if you're making a Kolsch style outside of Cologne, Germany, you can't technically call it a Kolsch, but so many people do. I mean, it's just, in, in the States, it's pretty easy beer to emulate. Um, not, not easy to get it perfect. So, when they have uh, technically, what, like, if it's Kolsch, it has to be brewed in Cologne. Got it. So, I mean, these 30 esque, 30 ish breweries. So, there's, so there's that, and I don't want to drive too long on this point, but. Does this little badge here, does that also have to, they have to like obey by the purity law? Or is that even still a thing? Um, Cause there's, there's a law a in thing. Germany no, that- it is that, a thing. Cause there's a law in Germany that you can't, like the purity law, whatever yeah. it is in German, we'll probably put it on the screen too. Yeah, the beer, the Reinheitsgebot. Reinheitsgebot. The, is the German beer. Gewürztraminer. The so, Reinheitsgebot is so, the German beer purity law. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I got this. Basically, you can't use any other ingredients in a in beer than malt, hops, water, and yeast. Yeah, and that's and that's the, it. The same this beer style. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, you, you just pack a lot of flavor, but not too much in those four ingredients. And nice, pretty great, pretty great stuff. What would you rate uh, this pairing today? Let me think on that while I sip and listen to this. Yeah, beautiful... luckily we got some good, another good local local example of this beer. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention St. Elmo's um, Carl Kolsch. The Carl Kolsch. Yeah. Another great, great local yeah. Austin brew beer. That is and brewery. Uh, a great example of the style. It's got the notes you're looking for. It's got that mild fruit. Man. It's so I, crushable. It's not perfect. I don't know what else would pair better, but I will give it like an 8.2. 8.2, all right, pretty good. Give it an 8.2 out of 10. Yeah, basically I was thinking, it's like, well, John Mayer and Jeff Buckley would you know, sound like this pedal, would use this pedal probably if they, if they had it. John John Mayer probably has it. He's, oh, he's, he's I, he has he has pedal cabinets so many upon pedals. pedal cabinets so I was like, man, if those guys were cabinets. a beer, they would be, they would be a Kolsch. Yeah. It's, Just like it's so a, easily, like the, like, just like this beer is so palatable, like this pedal and those those singers are so just like pleasing to the ear. This is, yeah, this is a great pairing, man. I don't think it's, I mean, I, I don't, there might be another type of beer. It's just, I'm not feeling it all the way, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, 8.2. This is great. Sick. We both need another one of these. Yeah. Should have bought more. Yeah, this is, yeah, it's way too easy to drink. But yeah, next time you're at your local brewery that makes a Kolsch, Step right there, you know. I'll, next time I go to St. Elmo's, hey, can I get to the Carl Gauche? Yeah, I want the Carl Gauche or go to Live Oak. They're like, or go to Live Oak Brewery and just go, yeah, um, what kind of Gauches do you have? Yeah, that's if we have a Kolsch. It's like one of our seasonals, but it is, yeah. You, you, for sure, St. Elmo will always have Carl, Carl. Gauche. For sure. Is the best. Tis, yeah. yeah, tis the best around, in the, around these parts. Uh, yeah. Well, stay pretentious, y'all. Search for the tone. Be you. And don't ever be afraid to be you. And don't be afraid to order <laughs> another couch. Go shit up. <laughs>